Hi guys, thanks for watching. So I want to start off this video by saying that no, weddings without dancing do not have to be boring. And just because your wedding doesn't have dancing or maybe you can't have dancing because of current safety restrictions, it doesn't mean that it's going to be boring and it doesn't mean that it's the only kind of like form of entertainment available for weddings. I think that we have it in our heads that weddings equal dancing and don't get me wrong, I love dancing at weddings, I really do, but there are a lot of other ways we can reimagine wedding activities that don't involve dancing. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to give you 13 alternatives to dancing at your wedding and also sort of like a, a timeline, a really basic timeline of what you can do if you're not having dancing at your wedding and how to fit in one of these other activities instead. And all of the alternatives I'm talking about today are with an in-person wedding in mind. However, if you are having a Zoom wedding or a virtual wedding, I think with like a little creative tweaking, most of these activities could work in those cases as well. Okay, so my first recommendation for you is fancy drinking games or classy drinking games. So think back to your university days and think about how you can make beer pong classy, such as using champagne glasses or champagne pong. You could even just replace a red solo cup with colorful cups and that would make it a lot better. Just the tiny tweak of like using solo cups that match your wedding color scheme or like gold cups or silver cups for a flip cup game makes it a classy flip cup game in my opinion. So that activity might not last too long or you might have some guests who can't participate because they're not drinking. So let's move on to idea number two, which is to project a movie. So you could have a movie night, especially if you're having having a backyard wedding or a wedding in a field of some kind. You could just buy like a cheap projector online and show your favorite movie or some kind of wedding movie or rom-com or like whatever you want to do. Show some kind of movie and if you're worried about safety at your wedding just get everybody to sit on their own individual blankets by by household maybe you know like spaced out. Another related really cute idea I like is to have individual blankets where people can dance just like on their own household blanket. So you have like little mini dance parties happening happening next to each other. So I've seen this at concerts recently where people are basically like in their own little pods watching and listening to a concert. So you could do the same thing at your wedding. Also related is a drive-in wedding. This would be a little tough to pull off because you need obviously a lot of space, um, but essentially like everyone comes in their cars and stays in their cars and watches a, mo watches a movie um, as part of your wedding. So like uh, that could be really cute if you have the space and um, facilities to be able to do a drive-in wedding. The third activity on my list is wedding trivia, which I really love. So I mean, like I'm not a huge trivia person, but I do like it when I play it. And um, so essentially you would have all of the tables at your wedding be teams and you'd have to get somebody to host this or MC it, maybe like a really personable, outgoing friend of yours. And the way you would play this is just like normal trivia. So I actually created like a wedding trivia document that has I think five different categories on it. Um, geography, current events, pop culture, music, and then like a relationship category where they have to answer questions about you and your partner. Um, if you are interested in this document, let me know in the comments below. I can send it to you or give you a link or something. Um, but you could also create your own. So you create this wedding trivia document, you give a, a copy to each table, and then essentially your host asks these questions or asks questions that you make, any trivia questions that you make. Um, and then you collect the papers at the end and the winning table gets some kind of prize. So this is just kind of fun because it's team building, especially if the people at the table, if you seat people at tables kind of mixed up so that um, yours and your partner's friends and family get to know each other. I also really love the idea of structuring the trivia categories so that they're all about you and your partner or all about things that you and your partner love, like having it for us, as an example, I love cheese and hot sauce. So there, <laughs> there might be like a, a category of five questions that are all about cheese or hot sauce or like a category of five questions all about rock climbing. My partner really likes rock climbing or travel, whatever, whatever you're interested in, you would just have categories about that subject. So it's basically like finding the table that knows as much about the subjects that you're interested in as you do. I probably wouldn't recommend making it a trivia just like all about you and your partner because your guests might get a little bit bored or might not be totally into it. I don't know. 
Fourth activity on my list is a little bit dorky, but it's essentially like a way more fun version of the toast or the speech, and it's Pecha Kucha, which is when somebody gives a speech or a presentation and they only have, they actually show slides. So they would show like a PowerPoint presentation slide. Stay with me. Um, so they would show 20 slides, but each slide is timed for 20 seconds each. So the whole thing is about six or six and a half minutes. I think maybe my math is wrong, but it's like someone's giving a toast, but they're on a tight time schedule. They've got those six ish minutes and it can be about you. It can be about something funny. And you would only ask like maybe two or three people to give a Pecha Kucha speech. The reason why this is better than a classic toast is one, because there's a time limit and two, because it's visual. So your, your whole audience is watching slides with photos and they have to have photos because it's quick. It's only 20 seconds per slide. It's like a way more fun twist on the traditional toast. Um, and I highly recommend this, especially if you choose people who are really going to take it seriously and put a lot of time and practice into it. And you'll just get like a much better rehearsed, beautiful, well thought out performance or speech than the average toast that you might get. It's also a lot more fun and interactive than doing like a slideshow, which can be a little bit boring. A fifth alternative is to have some kind of performance. So your audience really just chills and you have a performer of some kind, like a comedian or a hypnotist, maybe a belly dancer or a skit of some kind, or maybe a musical performance. So you, you might not be able to dance, but maybe you can have some kind of band play and listen to the music. Okay, number six, the sixth activity on my list is a team building activity. So some kind of like puzzle race where you have a puzzle on each table and the whole table has to like work together to do it really quickly. So you have to choose your activity carefully so that it's interesting. So I've seen really cool team building activities that they use in businesses and stuff, um, such as using, taking a, like a handful of marshmallows and a handful of, of raw spaghetti and basically like everyone has to build a tower using just these materials. <laughs> and then the tallest tower in five minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, however much time you wanna give them, the tallest tower wins. Admittedly, this is a little strange but inspiring competition can bring the members of a table together or maybe cause them to fight and maybe they'll hate each other. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully it'll turn out well. Number seven is musical bingo. I've actually never played this myself before, but as a teacher, I really like the idea of this. So you give people a, a blank bingo board and then you can project some possible music, some possible songs that are going to be played, maybe a list of like 200 or maybe less than that um, songs that they can choose from and they just write in the squares, whatever songs they want in whatever square. If you don't know how to play bingo, Google it. I don't know. <laughs> um, but essentially you get everybody to make their own bingo board. It takes like five or 10 minutes. And then you have your DJ or you or whoever plays music, plays like a series of predetermined songs. And when they hear the song, they're like, oh, that's on my bingo board. And they mark it off with an X. Essentially the only materials you need for this are like paper. You have to like make little grids, bingo grids for everybody and um, something to write with. And that's really it. And then you just play songs. It's fun because everybody gets to listen to music together. So they're not dancing, but they can still listen to music while doing like something that's engaging and still communal and fun. I also really like the idea of movie bingo if you're able to like project little clips of movies or like movie quote bingo. So I mean music is probably best for an event but if those other alternatives sound good to you, you could use those as well. Number eight is a competitive photo scavenger hunt. So each table is a team and you give each team a list of photos that they have to take and every member of the team has to be in each photo together. So they have to take selfies essentially with each other. And you would say like for each item on the list, maybe one item is um, take a picture with the wedding cake. So every person at that table needs to go to the wedding cake all get together and take a selfie or ask somebody else to take a picture of all of them together. And then you tell all the teams that whichever team is finished first gets a prize or even better, whichever team takes the most creative photos gets a prize. You could even ask them to hashtag, put everything on Instagram and hashtag it or, or just show you the photos if you don't want them posted online. 
again, this is communal and competitive and fun and still lets everybody be engaged with each other. Number nine is something I like to call no small talk Jenga. I actually did a DIY video about how to make your own no small talk Jenga as a wedding centerpiece. Um, so if this is interesting to you, go check out that video. But essentially it's using Jenga to um, ask each other fun questions, kind of like a truth or dare Jenga that you can DIY. So each Jenga block has a question on it that you either have to answer or an action that you have to do. Um, so this can be really fun at a wedding because you just make the Jenga tower kind of the centerpiece of the table and then um, you have kind of a built-in activity slash uh, decoration for your table. Number 10 is a little weird. It's sumo wrestling. If you have the ability to rent sumo wrestling suits, this might be a fun activity you can play at your wedding. Number 11, lawn games. I don't think I'm telling anybody anything new here, but having lawn games at your outdoor wedding is super fun. So like a giant connect four, cornhole, bocce, potato sack races, shooting nerf arrows at each other spike ball, ladder golf. There are so many lawn games out there, so just get some lawn games and have, have lots of activities like that for your guests to play if you're having an outdoor wedding. Number 12 is to have a bonfire. If you have the option of having a bonfire, this is awesome, go for it. This is what we wouldn't do at our wedding, actually, is to have a bonfire at some point in the night. And finally, guys, number 13, um, the last alternative to dancing at a wedding, although there are many more. If you have ideas, please write them in the comments down below. I would love to hear your ideas. But my final idea for this is play Wedding Jeopardy. This does require a lot of preparation and an MC, someone personable who can kind of host the event for you, but it's super fun playing Jeopardy at your wedding. If you have no idea how you would go about playing Wedding Jeopardy and you're interested in this, let me know. Maybe I can make a DIY Wedding Jeopardy video for you. And I think this video went on way too long, guys. I hope it was helpful for you. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.